So when you're ready to start. Chez Davos Capital Advisors, on s'est lancé en business dans le but d'aider des sociétés québécoises à grandir. Et quand on a appris que Betonec nous a confiance, ça a montré que le fruit de notre labeur a porté ses fruits. On se targue d'être capable de penser différemment. Et je suis sûr que vous avez vu beaucoup de conseillers talentueux aujourd'hui. Mais on pense qu'on arrive vraiment avec des idées novatrices et vraiment la bonne idée pour votre futur. Je suis Benjamin, c'est Chris et c'est Paul, et nous allons vous présenter nos recommandations. I will now continue in English for the rest of the presentation. So, the mandate was, at what price should the shares be bought by Agri to his siblings, and should they go through with the acquisition of BDN? And for us, there's three key considerations here. The main one is, is Bitonek too levered for such an acquisition? The, third, the second one is, is acquiring BDN missing an opportunity? And the third one is, how, how can you deal with the different considerations of your siblings so that the acquisition of their shares goes through smoothly? And our recommendation here is that you should focus on reducing your leverage so that you would be able to potentially do acquisitions in the future, and you could potentially pick up BDN's asset at a discounted price considering their poor performance, and that to have a smoothly run acquisition of your siblings' shares, you should consider each of their individualized considerations. All right, now into the analysis. So we know that the acquisition has good strategic components to it, but in order to acquire a company, first you have to have the ability to purchase the company. You have to have a good financial strength. So if we take a look at the current state of Bitonec, Bitonec right now, if we look at their balance sheet and we look at key items, we look that they have a very low cash balance, that with the current bank loan and the current uh, estimated portion of long-term debt, uh, that the total debt balance is close to 1.5 million. With the current equity and the total capital, that means they have a 50%, 56% debt to capital ratio. That's, uh, that's pretty decent, but in terms of an acquisition at their current, uh, in the current financial strength, it doesn't really make much sense. We can look at two other ratios. Time to earned interest, only two times. Right, that means they can only pay down their interest two times with their net income. The problem with that is, that's really low. Usually you want around four, five, six, depending on the liquidity that you'd like to have beside with the company. There's integration risk and you'd have a, a good cash standing here. And if we look at debt to EBITDA, same thing, only two and a half times. Usually you want to have around three, four, five. That gives you a lot of uh, padding in terms of acquiring the company and being able to have the solid footing if you have some integration risks of being able to absorb some costs, right? So what we can see here, the key takeaway is that the current capital structure is debt heavy in terms of an acquisition. Now, we did an audit of BDN statements and the numbers that were given to us shows us a positive EBT. But when we actually recomputed everything, we realized that, we're, that we're, uh, they were losing $110,000 every year. So they're actually operating from an accrual perspective, they're truly unprofitable. Now, if we take a look at the current state of BDM, as we explained, operationally speaking, they're not making any money. Now, in terms of capital expenditure, one of, the, one of their plants, Saint Jerome, is growing old. They're going to need to inject at least $350,000 of capital expenditures to put it up to norms and to be able to use it again. And then also, in the next years, they're going to have to uh, renew their uh, truck fleet by at least two trucks per year, which is the capital expenditure for the next five years of about 2.25 million. And in total, that means future capex of 2.6 million. So they're currently unprofitable and they will have to invest a lot of capital in the future. Now, why do we think you're not passing on a great opportunity by not acquiring their assets? Well, we think you have the ability to wait. If you take a look at who could potentially take over the business, well, the family is not interested in running it. And when it comes to executives and management, well, they don't have, they don't have the capital to do it. And BDN by itself already has a considerable amount of leverage. So an LBO is not possible for any of them. So they don't have any sort of way to take control of the business. The CEO is growing old and wants to sell, and the family is not interested in taking over. So you have your time to essentially acquire this, these assets, and considering the fact that they're losing money and they're going to have to inject a lot of capital expenditure, well, you will maybe be allowed to buy those assets at a discounted price when he's going to be in a distressed situation and not going to be able to meet interest payments or new capital expenditures. Now, the key considerations when it comes to acquiring the shares of your siblings. Agar plans on succeeding Look as the managing director of the company. And, well, 
you need more incentive than 5%. So he's willing to acquire other shares. Your siblings are not interested in running the family business and the three of them own together 15% of the company. So if we take a look at Carl, well, he's having a fantastic career in Germany. He's doing music. He doesn't have time for anything. His only concern is getting a fair market value. And we're gonna provide that to him. Now, when it comes to Laura, well, she is working for a startup and she needs $200,000 to put seed capital into the, into the firm to get major equity. Well, we can provide that to her because that 200,000 for a 5% implies an equity value of 4 million. And as we're gonna see later, her equity value is $4.5 million. And when it comes to Tatum, well, he's concerned about the environmental implications of the cement business. The cement business is not the best, ecologically speaking, so we would be willing to uh, update the Prevo um, plant making, by making it more sustainable and putting it up to uh, current ESG norms. Now, the key takeaway here is that for a successful buyout, you need to take into consideration individuals, uh, individuals' concerns so that the entire process can run smoothly. Thank you very much, Ben, for the insight on the strategy. Now, of course, you know, strategy is mostly talk, but we also need to look at this from a financial point of view. Um, you know, without the numbers, a lot of the time, deals sound great, but sometimes financially they don't make sense, or vice versa, you know, they don't sound too great, but they actually do make a lot of sense. So let's examine this. So, our key strategy, right? So what we're gonna go for is not acquiring uh, at present day and then looking forward four years. And that would be our acquisition window in four years. Here's why. So the way we get to it is first, we need to delever the company in order to you know, be able to do a successful LBO in year four. So how would we do so? Well, we cut the dividend. Um, this is not a public company, this is privately held and the dividend isn't as necessary as you may think. So by using uh, the dividend cut, we're able to generate more retained earnings and just general cash in the account. So what do we do with that cash? Well, as my colleague Ben uh, just noted, um, we want to make this company more sustainable and uh, adhere to more ESG factors. So, you know, we can use cash flow allocation as a key strategy in being able to reduce the debt, make it more ESG friendly, and also uh, pay down the different levels of debt. So. In our model, we assume two tranches. We assume a senior and a junior, uh, just for simplicity's sake for the model. And I'm happy to walk you through it. So the aggressive strategy of debt repayment will be able to open a window after year four in order to acquire the business. So let us examine how exactly we're gonna do it. So we're gonna take 35% of our free cash flow and use that as debt repayment. Now, they may seem high, but this is a fixed strategy. This is a strategy that uh, we think you should believe in, uh, just given that the cash flows are relatively healthy. I mean, if you look at the cash flows here of, of the uh, acquirer, they're, they are relatively healthy and relatively stable. Um, so we are assuming a 3% annual uh, average growth rate, so across the five-year window of the model. Um, and so let's, let's examine this from a numerical point of view now. So we take 35%, which is uh, 108, 35% of the 310, and we use that to pay down the senior tranche of the debt. Um, why the senior? Because you have to pay that down before any other existing tranches, okay? So that would give us this debt outstanding. So in the model, you, you'd be able to see that the debt is separated by tranche, but here for simplicity's sake, this is junior and senior put together. So this will just show you uh, debt outstanding for the company as a whole. So let us examine the key model drivers. Uh, and well, I'm happy to take this uh, one by one uh, with you. So let's examine the weighted cost of, uh, weighted average cost of capital. So the 9.3, where did it come from? Um, the weighted cost of capital came from, uh, so we examined, we weighted two industries. So we weighted the construction supplies industry, and we also weighted the um, construction materials industry. And we did half and half, so we weighted them 50% each and we came to the 9.3% WAC. Um, it, you know, happy to go over it with you in more detail in the Q&A. Uh, then we took the tax rate given uh, as 13%, terminal growth rate as 2.3. So that gave us an enterprise value of $5.8 million for the acquirer. And minus the net debt would give us an equity value of four, roughly four and a half million, uh, which uh, Ben was referring to. 
So you purchase your sibling share at a fair equity value. So let us examine the financial impact of the uh, acquisition. So the current financial position, we can see that there is a healthy amount of debt, but not healthy enough to do an acquisition. Um, afterwards, we need to examine the DE ratio. So the DE ratio right now is healthy, and we acknowledge that it would work uh, for acquisition value. However, we don't feel like now is the right time. We'd rather pay that down, you know, clear up the books, just even looking at the cash position, it's not very strong. Clear up the books and then, um, and then acquire the firm in, in the four year window. So let us look at what would happen if we did acquire it today. So the new debt we have to take on is two and a half million. That's just an unhealthy amount of debt given that our debt to equity ratio would spike to 78%. So in other words, acquiring it now is just not the right time. Right. So let's take a look at this strategy. So if not now, oh, sorry. There you go. if not now, when would be the right time to uh, acquire it? Right? Because we saw that if there's some clear strategic components, that makes sense, right? There's the San Jerome facility that they have, that we have, and there's some uh, synergies that we can save there in terms of cost synergies. <coughs> there's also different locations across Quebec now that we would be able to get, really, to get a pricing uh, advantage here. So what we want to see is like, by having these new regions, by taking up a competitor, we would have more, uh, we would gain geographic coverage really in this space. And in the worst case scenario, we'd be able to buy their assets at liquidation. So, what I want to stress here is currently, as we saw for Beton, Beton no, is that right now they are at risk of going to bankruptcy with the way that the current cash flows are and their current uh, uh, final position, a financial position, right? But we don't see that window coming soon, one, two years. We see it more like three, four years, right? And so we don't think today is the right time to acquire based on our financial position, right? We saw that we're able to get, we're able to uh, get a, a bunch of savings on transportation costs, on water savings costs, but at the end of the day, if you can't pay, why, why, why stress your business that much? Why put so much debt on the balance sheet, create integration, integration risks at the same time, and just have too much on your mind? So we would be able to reduce transportation costs, and we'd be able to have stronger pricing, about three to five percent above inflation here. And these are the two locations that we'd get new. The San Home, there's some overlap, Mirabel. Now we've got a new geographic area within the 25 kilometer radius. It's able to get the tracks out, the cement out, and deliver to your to your clients. So what would be the terms for the VC financing alternative if we were to do it? Because what's nice about VC is it's equity, and if we were to pursue the acquisition, then there wouldn't be stress. There'd be some dilution, right? But there wouldn't be stress. In this case, the VC was in the form of a term loan that would be convertible to securities. So you still have that debt component in the beginning here. And it's contingent on your company performing here. So we see the terms of the loan was 1.1 million. At the current 12% interest rates and seven years repayment on the second rank claim, we actually calculated that within convertibility, if it were to be converted, that would uh, dilute 25% of the equity, it'd be $1.13 million valuation at the, current, uh, at the current time. And we'd be happy to go into how we got that number in uh, the Q&A. So what we really want you to take away from here is for future acquisitions, avoid all, at all costs this type of financing conversation right now because of the huge interest burden that you'll have and the convertible op uh, option on your equity. Right? One of the things we wanted was Argar to really start building his equity in the company, but having this on and already diluting 20% more of the company, that's not gonna be a strategy that's gonna get him to where he wants to be, to be really aligned and benefit from the growth of the company. So, why were we here today? Well, we were here to really advise you, Clou Betanek, on the potential acquisition of VDN and on the fair value of the company for your family, the Tomblay family, uh, to exchange shares. We looked at three things here. We wanted to see um, that we saw that you would have unbearable leverage if you were to pursue this acquisition. Uh, it would really cause your balance sheet debt to equity to be about, or excuse me, debt to capital more so, 78%. That's higher than what you would usually get at a leverage buyout today, especially with the EBITDA turn. So it would be ridiculously high, maybe eight or nine or something like that. So it doesn't make sense from that regard. Second is it's unprofitable, and we will get the assets at a discounted price later on. Not right now. Doesn't make sense. Let's wait for the company to see how it does. Um, at the current time, we also saw that we had some uh, negotiating leverage because 
the founder of the company was not able to get his children uh, to um, pass the, uh, the company on to them. So he's got no success, uh, successor to help run the business. Acquiring it later on, as he reaches the age of retirement, will allow him or you that opportunity to take his company and turn it for him. And you have more of the, you have more of the bargaining power on that conversation because he's got nobody lined up, right? And what? Excuse me. Lastly, is uh, by mining someone's consideration, the buyout will go will go smoothly here. So what we recommended today was that you should focus on reducing your leverage, buy the assets BDM at a discounted price, not today, but for within four years in the future, three four years. It depends on how your debt looks like moving forward. But based on our estimates, it came out to four years, and then sell in the proceeds of the acquisition uh, to really get this new uh, strategic footing moving forward. Um, you should acquire the shares of your siblings. We value the company at two, a $4.5 million valuation. And actually, since we have time right now, we can probably go into the model in a bit more detail. Sure. So to go into the model, um, you, you can see this a rather steady revenue growth. You know, we talked about the 2.9 growth over average growth over the five years. That's going to be able to drive that debt payoff uh, in the four-year window. So. Um, you would be able to pay off the debt in the four-year window given those, given the revenue growth and the gross margin. So that will, we kept it relatively constant, being that this is typically a flat industry, you know, without too much volatility. Also, we considered uh, that the concrete and construction uh, industry, you know, has a lot to do with economic factors. Um, it was well stated in the case, and that's something we understood in this. So, given today and where the economy is at, you know, this is, has been a record long boom, and you know, perhaps we don't expect it to grow all that much in the future. So, I think that revenue growth is pretty constant, with the understanding that the Canadian government would keep uh, infrastructure um, investing at a relatively constant rate. So, given that. We were able to find our enterprise value, uh, less than net debt, which gave us the equity value of 4.5 million. Um, and as uh, my colleague here told you, um, that would just make the VC financing infeasible because in order to get, with the VC financing, you would get around 1 million, 1.1 million, whereas here, it would, the true value of the equity is four and a half, so it would not be logical. So, as there was capital advisors, we'd like to thank you for your time and open the floor for questions. Um, I, maybe I, start, I can start. Um, you mentioned that the debt required capital uh, ratio was 56%, but we actually have um, a business here that's asset heavy, so it's assets that easily are easily financeable, so it's equipment, it's buildings, it's um, so, and now you, you're telling me to repay that debt, that's probably like at four or five or six percent. So, uh, do I have a better investment that I could do with my money than to pay out my credit debt? Because actually, for that kind of company, the debt to capital is okay. Yeah, so this is why we recommended using 35% of your free cash flows to pay it down, not the full amount, right? Because that wouldn't make sense to just completely deliver it. The extra 65% you can use for reinvestment in inventories, reinvestment in other facilities as soon as or really growing the company rather than just pursuing acquisitions. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> on that, I will add, uh, on the ratio you, you, you calculated, uh, did you take uh, into account the uh, equity investment by look of uh, 400,000? To, to calculate the ratios, you added that, but uh, for the acquisition, you mentioned it was uh, willing to put in uh, 400,000. So the net debt calculations were used using cash. The reason we did not use stock is that they might be private investments, and so they might be highly liquid. So we have no idea if it's actually liquid securities. So we might not be able to liquidate them to actually pay down the debt. We might be stuck with those shares maybe 10 years. So that's why we didn't use them. In but my question was more like, did you take into account the equity investment to compute the ratios? No. Right. So in, in this case, we actually assumed that it was already within contained within the one point uh, one billion equity here within the, the share capital. Okay. Have you considered that uh, since you're not uh, going forward with, with the acquisition, that maybe someone else will can take some market shares that, that you might have just taken here? So the idea is, as we saw in the audited statements, the business is actually not making money. It's going to have to be capital expenditure heavy. So as an acquisition target, it's complicated. We're taking on a lot of debt. We're getting only two plants. 
And by doing this, we're basically the main competitor here, and everything is going to be driven by price competition. And by trying to get into the Quebec market and trying to steal that uh, that competitor, trying to acquire that uh, that competitor, you're going to end up with the. Uh, sorry. Okay. We're going to end up with a lot of that on the acquirer's balance sheets, and two power plants. They're going to need to be uh, two uh, concrete plants. They're going to uh, they're going to need to be replaced very quickly. So you're acquiring a business that does a lot of debt and that's going to cost you a lot of money. And the synergies might not be there because they don't have the implementation that we have. So I'll we'll sure you that's all for the five minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.